Hello friends, welcome to Rajesh Data Engineering. This is second video in our Delta Live Table series. In this video, I'm going to talk about declarative and procedural approaches. These are two different approaches most commonly used in data engineering or software engineering development. These are nothing new concepts. These are being used quite long time in data engineering space. In my introduction video, I told Delta Live Table is using declarative approach. So in order to learn Delta Live Table, it's important to understand what is declarative approach, how it is different from procedural approach and what are the different benefits we are getting out of declarative approach. It's very important to understand. So in this video, I'm going to shed more light on that topic. So first I'm going to explain more about procedural approach. Coming to procedural approach, that is the approach being used in Databricks ETL development when we are not going with Delta Live Table. So whenever we are uh, building ETL pipelines using regular notebook, regular approach, that is called procedural approach. And when we are using Delta Live Table, we are using declarative approach. Right, let us try to understand what is a procedural approach. Coming to procedural approach, we have to explicitly outline all the ETL steps. Coming to ETL steps, we have to specify the uh, logic or uh, we, we have to uh, write the code for extraction and applying various transformation, then loading the data into target system. So for each and every step, we have to explicitly create the logic and we have to write the code. So that is procedural approach. In order to achieve certain final output, there would be list of steps that we need to perform. Then only we can achieve the final output. So we have to follow all the steps in proper order. If you are going to change the order, then it is going to produce wrong output. Right. And coming to procedural approach, we are uh, keeping some output in, in our mind. So we, we know what kind of output we need, what we need. But along with what, we have to define, we have to tell how we can achieve that output. So for each and every step, we are going to create logic saying that how we can achieve the final output. So coming to procedural uh, approach, the keyword how is more important. I, I need this final output, but how I am going to get that? So in order to achieve that output, we have to follow certain steps. Each and every step, we have to manually dictate. Manually in the sense, through our logic, we have to create those steps. So coming to procedural approach, this is more of how. So in order to understand this better, let me give some uh, example. So let's say you are uh, going to some new city. You are landing in, in a particular uh, source location. And from there, you have to reach certain destination. Let us assume you are going to attend some conference. Uh, um, conference. So you are uh, getting into some city and from that city, you have to travel to another destination location. Let us assume you are completely new to this uh, uh, location. So you don't have any uh, idea about uh, their uh, na navigation plan or uh, the travel plan. So what you have done is you have gathered some knowledge from your uh, friends or uh, through internet. Let us assume you know, that the information is not sufficient. But still, you know, you wanted to use that knowledge uh, for uh, your uh, travel. So let us assume you have landed into that particular city. Then you are uh, hiring a taxi for your uh, travel. But uh, instead of telling the destination to the taxi driver, what you are uh, doing is you, know, you have decided to direct the taxi driver with step-by-step uh, -step, uh, information. So what you, are, uh, what you are doing is, let's say this is your uh, source location. You are hiring the taxi driver. Then uh, you are just instructing the taxi driver, can you go to landmark one? Then the taxi driver goes to landmark one. Once that is reached, then you are giving next instruction, go to landmark two. Then after that, landmark three, then landmark four, land, then destination. So the taxi driver, he does not have any clue where uh, you are, uh, uh, you know, what kind of final output you are looking for until this location is reached. So the taxi driver is not applying any thinking. Just whatever uh, instruction he is getting from you, just uh, he is executing. Right, this is one approach. But hypothetically, you know, I have given this uh, scenario. Here you can see this is not efficient uh, 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 travel plan. Why? Because you got some half-cooked knowledge through internet or uh, through some uh, people which you are trying to apply here. This is not uh, producing efficient output. So in case we are going to follow this, this route, then it would be more uh, efficient. Why? Because you know, we can avoid long uh, travel in order to reach this destination. 
so as a result you can save uh, not only money but also your valuable time so so what we have to do in this step so the, the taxi driver who is living in this area he is having good control of this location and this is his business and he has a very strong knowledge on the travel routes so whenever you are going to tell what you need this is my final destination this is what i want if you are going to tell that then the taxi driver can start thinking how we can reach this location for that he will apply all his uh, knowledge uh, to determine the best efficient route so what is the current time in this peak time which are the uh, roads uh, would be blocked due to heavy traffic uh, now you know during this time office hours uh, school hours you know he will consider uh, all those uh, factors to determine best and efficient route you know by considering all those things he will uh, determine the best efficient route and he will take you to that route so you are going to save money and cost so what we are doing we are asking someone who is good at uh, that particular uh, travel plan we are uh, using that intelligent engine we are not thinking on our own but you know we are uh, outsourcing that uh, thinking uh, plan to some intelligent engine so this is kind of declarative approach so whenever you are going to uh, define all the steps one by one which is called procedural but uh, instead of that just you are going to tell what you want then there will be some intelligent engine that engine will start thinking on your behalf and it is going to yield better result that is called declarative approach i hope you understood going back to procedural approach so here explicitly we have to define all the steps and we have to follow the proper steps and also we have to tell what we want along with how we can achieve that as a result it is going to know we have to follow multiple steps as a result it is going to produce a huge amount of code and the development is going to be time time consuming and also it is error prone approach and if there is some problem then it is very difficult to understand in which step where we go wrong then the uh, debugging it is going to be more complex and troubleshooting that is going to be more time consuming and laborious and coming to examples stored procedures in uh, any traditional uh, sql uh, language or a regular spark application or azure data factory you know these are the examples of uh, procedural approach and coming to procedural approach we will be using all the iterative or uh, conditional uh, uh, logic like if else uh, in order to create a different branches or switch statement or using a while loop a for loop you know we will uh, follow all the procedural approaches coming to declarative approach this is completely opposite to procedural approach in declarative approach we are going to just tell we are going to declare what kind of final outcome we are looking for so all the internal steps would be abstracted we are not going to guide the engine step by step so we are having some intelligent engine that will start thinking on our behalf and it will come up with best efficient plan so all the etl steps are abstracted and there is no specific order to be followed just we can declare what are the items we need let's say you are going to hotel just you are going to uh, list out the items that you are interested in then there will be some intelligent engine uh, chef and uh, his team they will start thinking in order to produce this outcome what are the internal steps we need to follow that will be uh, that thinking will be applied by uh, intelligent uh, people then you know they will bring uh, right efficient good quality product for you right so coming to declarative approach we have to just declare what is needed instead of focusing on how to achieve that product so what that is the keyword which is used in declarative approach and as i mentioned we are having certain intelligent engine that will start thinking on our behalf to transform to extract transform and load the data more efficiently and uh, with the high performance so as a result of this approach we don't need to produce huge amount of code and uh, coming to this approach debugging and troubleshooting is also very e easy and it can be quick and coming to examples in the recent times dbt which is data build tool that is very popular that is using same declarative declarative approach concept and the delta live table which got introduced a couple of years back in databricks that is also following declarative approach so these are the examples of declarative approach i hope you understood what is a procedural approach what is declarative approach what is the difference between these two and what is the advantage we are carrying forward while using declarative approach i hope uh, you enjoyed this video 
If you like the content of this video, please like and comment in the channel. Also, please subscribe this channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button to get latest video on Databricks. Thank you.